Hello, and welcome back to the third part of this video series covering Substance Painter and its implementation of Asus CG. Once again, I'm Michael Wilde, and if you haven't watched parts one and two, then hop over to them first, as we've already covered the important color space terminology and how to work with OCIO and Asus CG inside of Painter. In this final part, we're gonna quickly look at correctly importing our textures into Maya to get an Asus CG render matching our Substance Painter viewport. I'm going to be demonstrating with Maya since it's the industry standard digital content creation package for VFX, which most large and mid-sized studios build their pipeline around. Plus nine times out of 10, it's the software you need to know when applying for VFX jobs. I will also briefly cover the same thing in Blender since it's an important first step for people learning VFX and getting the same result across multiple programs also demonstrates part of the reason ASUS and OCIO were created to standardize handling color data across multiple digital packages. In the previous video, we looked at our export settings in Substance. With all that good to go, I'm ready to actually export my textures. This is done exactly the same as it would usually be. You can use a Substance preset for whichever renderer you're using or make a preset yourself. I have one here that exports my textures as eight and 16-bit TIFFs with a naming convention similar to the ones used in VFX studios. Since this doesn't affect color space, I'm not gonna explain how I did that, but if you're unfamiliar, then check out the other videos on Substance's YouTube channel. As we discussed in part two, Asus color management can be added to a piece of software with OCIO via a config file. Like with Substance Painter, the latest version of Maya comes built in with Asus as a standard, but for older versions of the software, we can set it up ourselves. You can download Asus for free from their website if you need it. It comes in at about two gigabytes, so go and make a cup of tea whilst it downloads. In Maya, we're gonna open up our preferences and go to color management. I'm in Maya 2023 here, and you can see by default, we have color management enabled, Asus CG setup as our rendering space, and sRGB as our display just like we had in Painter. We also have the view setting as Asus. We could change this to something else, for example, if we wanted to see our renders without any color management for debugging, but as it stands, this is correct. If you're working with an older version of Maya, for example, here I have 2019 open, then you need to select the Asus 1.2 OCIO config file that we downloaded earlier as our config path. Doing this will give us a slightly different set of defaults. If we're using a downloaded config file, it will set our display to ASUS, but then add an sRGB view transform on top of that to show us our ASUS renders correctly. Regardless of if you're using the inbuilt ASUS setup or the downloaded ASUS config file, it's important to set this up at the start of your project as altering halfway through may mean you need to retell Maya how to manage the color of every single file you've already imported. I've got my model into Maya ready to apply my textures on it. I'm gonna open up the Hypershade and create a new Arnold standard shader and then add a file node to the color. I'm now able to import my substance base color textures by finding the files on disk. After I've linked that up, it's time to go down to my files color space dropdown and tell Maya how to handle this input. Since my base color map is color data, like we saw in part two of this series, Substance exported it as utility sRGB texture. We need to tell Maya that this is the color space of this image and the same for any other color data maps so that it can be ingested correctly. Remember our Google Translate metaphor from the previous video. We're helping the color data be interpreted properly by telling it what's being inputted. If I click the dropdown of every input color space that ASUS config gives us, I will find utility sRGB texture eventually in this long list. If you're using the inbuilt Maya 2023 ASUS setup, instead of a downloaded ASUS config file, this is a little bit more streamlined, so you actually have a lot less to select from, and you're looking for an option called display sRGB instead. The final thing to change on this file node is the UV tiling method, which needs to be UDIMS so that my texture files get picked up correctly. Now I'm going to add my spec roughness in the same way. After creating a file node for it and selecting the images on disk, I will go down to my color space options to set this up again. As covered in part two, specular roughness is scalar data, so we don't want to use the same input color space this time. In fact, we don't want Maya to do any conversion since we just want the pixel data to be read as pure data. The utility raw option tells Maya exactly that. This is raw data, no conversion is needed. And it's as easy as that. You just need to remember to set up UDIMs again if you're using them, and then use the raw setting for any other scalar data maps you might import. Once I've set up the maps I export from Painter, I'm also gonna set up the same HRI that we had in Substance as well. 
To do that, I'll add an Arnold Skydome light and under the color of it, I'll once again select a file. I'll locate the EXR file on my computer and add it. This time, however, we're gonna to need to set it up slightly differently. Our HDRI image is color data, but unlike the earlier maps that we were importing, it's a linear EXR file. So we need to tell Maya this. For this kind of file, we need to select Utility Linear sRGB. Again, if you're using the inbuilt Maya 2023 Acer setup, this will be named slightly different, and it's called Scene Linear, Scene Linear Rec 709 sRGB. Now you'll see it in the Maya viewport looking correct. And really, that's all that we need to do. If I rotate the HDRI to be the same angle and set off a render, we can compare the Substance viewport and the Arnold render view and see that they look very similar. Obviously, there will be slight differences as Substance's viewport and Maya use different render engines. For example, Arnold has shadows, but both programs are correctly using Asus CG via OCIO to handle our color data correctly. I can further show this by setting up a render AOV in Arnold to show just my base color map at render time and view the same then in Painter. This way, I can bypass the slight differences of the renderers and their shaders to see that the imported textures are set up correctly. And what would you know? They look exactly the same. Now let's do the same thing in Blender. So Blender is slightly less user-friendly for color management and to get Asus working. There's no way in the software to just import a config file like we did in Maya, so we need to set up a Windows environment variable that points to it. I'll create one called OCIO with a link to the Asus config file, and now when I open Blender, it will pick this up automatically. It's worth mentioning that this will override other programs that read this variable, like Maya and Substance, if you were using their inbuilt Asus setups in a file. If you do get errors from this, then deleting the environment variable before opening those files will stop the issue, as I've had to do recording this video, jumping between all these different programs. So in Blender, when I've got that set up, if I go to color management under output properties, you will see now that I have the Asus settings similar to Maya. I've set up a principled shader with my textures already hooked up. Under color space, I've used the same options as earlier, utility sRGB texture for my color data maps, and Utility Raw for scalar ones. One thing to mention here is that since there are so many presets in the Asus config file, Blender can't actually fit them all onto the screen. So it's really annoying, but to see them all, for example, the Utility sRGB texture option, which kind of comes towards the end, you need to zoom out so that they all fit onto the screen, then get your reading glasses on to find the correct setting in that wall of tiny text. When all my shader inputs are set up, I can jump over to my HDRI settings to choose the correct color space for that. Once again, you can see here, just like Maya, I've used the same utility linear sRGB option because we're using a linear EXR file. And that's the beauty of OCIO, a unified pipeline across different packages. Now, if I render, you will see it's all working and our colors look correct. You may notice the specular is slightly brighter in this render engine, I'm only using a spec roughness map with this object and not a specular color one to control the brightness of the spec. But to debug that I haven't set up something incorrectly, I can create another AOV to view the base color and make sure that all my maps are coming in as expected. Since we set up Asus correctly and told the input textures how to be handled, the color is exactly the same as our substance viewport and the Arnold AOV that I set up earlier. So it's just a case of the shader specular model working slightly differently to the others. Once again, this is one of the most important things about Asus and OCIO for texture artists, the ability to have perfect parity with our colors between different 3D packages. So I think that's a perfect place to wrap this video up since we've got our Asus CG substance textures imported and rendering correctly in other packages. Just remember, it's really important to correctly set up your color space settings on all of your maps. And that also finishes out this video series. I know it's been a lot of information, but hopefully over the last three videos, I've been able to help you understand what color spaces are, the needs and advantages of Asus, and how to implement it in your substance texturing pipeline and beyond. I've been Michael Wilde. Thank you so much for sticking with me and I'll see you around the internet. Cheers.